Hi everybody. My name is Nikhil Saraf. I work for Leptin Software and today I want to tell you a story about my journey through building servers in JavaScript. The lessons I learned, the things I had to unlearn and all my experiences and It's a long story. Well, uh, not really. It's just 3 years but you know I'm just 25 and so 3 years seems like a long time. The story begins back in May 2019. with my first real product that i was building it was called qwerty and i was building it with my friend devansh from school the idea was that we would help college students help each other by answering questions that others had i was responsible for building the whole product and i learned that you know i had to build a client and a server to build my full application and well i heard that the server was the difficult part so i was like like you know let's go for that i looked around and there wasn't anything i particularly liked in terms of how i wanted to write my code and so just like every other engineer has made the mistake i thought let me build my own and i called it tavern the idea was that it was this monolithic server with this microservices architecture in the middle like you know these small modular decoupled things that would talk to talk to each other using messages and you know you could just plug things in and take things out and as you see the irony is in the description where i'm calling it super simple where it most likely was not super simple at all i had spent one month and did not have a product to show and did not have any features to show well i was like you know let me build the client at least and so i looked around and i found next years and that immediately was a breath of fresh air for me it has given me so many new ideas that have lasted these last few years the first and the most important was that you're not building two different applications you're building one application and these are just different parts of the application the second one was file system routing and the idea is there is not just about file systems the idea is that the code is so well understood by the bundler that it can figure out all these next level optimizations to make sure your app runs super fast on the infrastructure available the other part that made these things very scalable was the idea of serverless that were sell introduced to me the idea that i did not need to worry about where my server ran or how i scaled it up the getting integrations made me realize that i did not want to think about when my server was deployed or how it was deployed i just wanted this stuff to be taken care of and that's what next js did for me there was a few things that you know still bothered me about my experience with next js the first was the huge amount of opinions so let's say i just wanted to try a different file system routing convention i would need to build all of next js all over again just to be able to do that since these opinions are so heavily ingrained into the architecture of the product the second was the very very slow development experience that webpack caused it would cause multiple multiple seconds to see any changes on the screen and it was just not fun to work on but you know it was the best in the market and time went and we we were able to develop something really good in it uh but you know interest started waning and we all got jobs and we kind of moved on from qwerty there was something very interesting i found i had been using graphql before that and i started thinking that i don't really need this something that i have to do a lot of wiring around just to make sure i can have full transparency between the server and the client have typescript support things like that i found this thing called bliss js and the idea was that you write your server code right next to your client code in separate modules but right next to each other in the same directory and you'd be able to import your server functions into the client and just have an end to end typescript experience during compilation the bundler would figure out what api endpoints need to be generated and it would just do that behind the scenes without me having to worry at all it felt like i was right literally writing one app through the client and the server one other idea that stuck around similar to file system routing is this idea introduced by swix and the idea was of a self provisioning runtime the idea that your bundler and your build setup and your runtime should all cooperate together to give you the infrastructure you need the deployment patterns you need to succeed just by looking at your code and your code should have enough expressibility to be able to describe the architecture you want describe the application you want and all the tools would just start spinning around to make sure you got the experience you want I went to this crazy path of describing my architecture in jsx using react components and i would have um, a react render that would spit out config files and deployment instructions and things like that and whenever i changed it all of this was committed in git and so it was something really fun but it's not something that i have you know carried over through the years because it was not easy to maintain well with this we move on to act 2 a lot of time had passed and i was not working on the product but i was just exploring around and i slowly moved into this phase where i was getting to live one of my old dreams again 
and that was to be able to build games. And this was made possible because of the new tooling that I had discovered in this area. That was 3JS, React 3 Fiber, and being able to use all my React abilities to build complex games with logic, rendering, all of this. It was just so easy and I just instantly fell in love with it. You can see this game of chess I had built and I was really proud of. While building this game, I realized I needed another server. And this time, it was a different kind. It was just a development server for something that was completely client-side. But what the development server would give me is a fast, uh, hot module replacement experience. And an experience, uh, well, as I made changes, I could see uh, changes on my screen and see my game develop in real time. And that's that's the, that's the really fun part of it. And this is where Weed came into play. And I started building games with it. I soon needed to build some documentation sites. And that's when I again felt the lack of a server, right? And I did not want to go back to Webpack. And so that's when I built my first meta framework. I called it Wheat Next, you know, not very original. But the idea was to build something that actually had a lot of the opinions from Next.js, some different, but it was built on top of this new stack that I fell in love with, Wheat, React Router, React Query, and things like that. Well, as you can imagine, it was a really tough thing to maintain and I did not continue to maintain it, but I learned so much about what uh, what all a meta framework entailed. It kind of led me to, and you know, the, the way I was building games, it led me to actually discovering Solid and Solid Start. The idea was that I wanted to build fast games and Solid helped me do that. And then I needed a server again. And that's when I found Solid Start. It was built on Wheat, which I loved, but it actually introduced me to this new idea, which I had not seen before, but actually was inspired by Remix, Weltkid, Astro, and the idea was that you wrote your app once and it could deploy to any of the tens of providers available in the market. And you would not need to change your code. You would not need to do anything special, just a different flag. And you could just deploy your uh, app anywhere and you could actually change your deployments as your needs change and things like that. So I decided to join the team and work, started working with Ryan Carniato, Carniato to actually make this project more mature and add more features to it. We added what I think are some really great features. Some of them were inspired by others. Some of them were our originals. The feature that we're most proud of is this idea of server actions, which are, you know, which are all the rage nowadays. But the idea was that uh, you would have a way of writing code within your client modules and a compiler would split them out into their own endpoints. And to you, it would just feel like you're just declaring a function and calling it. But the compiler was doing so much more to make this a client server architecture. And so you could write your database queries right within your components. And it was just amazing to write in. And finally, we introduced islands inspired by Astro. And now we think of them as equivalent of server components because we were able to introduce all these complex routing mechanisms on top. But the idea was that, you know, send as little JavaScript to the client as needed and get a fast experience during hydration that way. There were a few problems we faced uh, during this process. It was becoming a drag because of the number of issues that were happening. And most of the issues were around the various adapters that we would have to maintain. And me and Ryan talked about this continuously that us, Sweltkit, Astro, Quick City, we're all doing the same development again and again and maintaining these adapters and building them again. It's a layer that just needs to be consistent uh, mature, well-tested, and well-maintained. And so we were looking for a way to harmonize. Uh, alas, we couldn't get there back then. But what I learned was that a full framework is not just the client and the server, but it's actually a module system, a bundler, and the server runtime all working together to orchestrate this dance that, you know, is the app. That is well, with these learnings, time moved on. Solid start was getting more and more difficult to maintain. And uh, we were having, we were discussing ideas about, you know, what part to take, how do we get rid of maintaining these adapters? So we actually started wo working on an integration with Astro and, you know, see if we could use their server framework and build our layers on top. With that in the background, I moved back to India and joined Leptin Software. The first project that I was leading was, uh, was the development of this data catalog where we had a lot of geospatial data across India and we wanted to be able to show it off on maps and in a really dynamic way. But it also had to be really, really, really fast and you know as much, as much statically rendered as possible with all the JSON files and things like that. And that's coincidentally when Next.js app directory was released. And I instantly jumped on because I had been looking at server components for a long time and I was, a, I was really fond of the idea. And I really liked the way they had been manifested in Next.js app directory. We tried it out. 
the experience was as we expected the every user who used it was surprised at the speed at which the app was performing for them considering the complexity of the app itself uh well the problems with next js were kind of the same as the last time the development process was really slow and now with so many so much involved in doing the server components part it was taking even longer for any change to be reflected and the second was again the number of opinions that it held and how it was really difficult to play around and you know experiment with new ideas there and so i started working with my friend fathi and we worked on this first uh, run at building an react server components integration with veed it didn't take very long but the key lesson i learned was that this time i needed three servers to actually be able to uh, deliver good ssr experience with react server components i would need one for react server components one for server side rendering and a development server for the client uh, this is again kind of revealed one weakness in the current existing veed model is which whenever there is a lot of server complexity involved you have to build something completely of your own and i realized for people to actually be able to use our beat plugin people needed a full framework on top of it because routing was very specific uh bundling was very specific chunking was very specific and so i built this thing called fully react kind of my third hit at a meta framework and uh, it wasn't any easier than before because again all of the server pieces i had to redo resolve the same problems and i was still not you know feature parity in terms of all the adapters all the build optimizations things like that in the process i had discovered that i can actually make this contribution back to the react uh, core repository and that was to introduce the react server dom veet package analogous to react server dom webpack which it, which would introduce first class support to veet in the react server components ecosystem and you know as you can see it's been very well received i'm yet to land it but one part doing this pr was actually building a whole fixture uh, that would test this setup and now for the fourth time i wrote the same you know multi server architecture with different builds different configuration manifest files talking to each other uh and so it clearly revealed to me that there is repetitive work that i have done four times and numerous people are doing again and again and it show, uh, it told me that there's a new layer of abstraction needed there I, just as i was thinking about this i saw this new release from jared sumner and part of his bun bundler release was this small sneak peek called the bun app and the idea was that bun was facing a similar problem to this and jared thought of a really nice way of expressing this he broke it down into small routers a router is a small section of your app normally under a specific prefix which is being handled a certain way so you know a certain number of plugins are being applied to it is being built either to be run on the server or to be deployed to the client or be served statically things like that and he was able to show using the same api a static file server an api server and a next js file system routing based framework i really like this idea and i wanted to see how much of this i could take and bring to my world of veet and node js the second piece missing piece of the server architecture was nitro the actual runtime that would be almost my equivalent of the bun runtime where i would get Uh, a nice api to use builds that would work across adapters uh it was really well maintained because maintained by nux team uh there was a few issues you know just didn't have a very nice dev server where the client was involved and uh, it just did not recognize that you know you might have a client that you're developing in the same application and with these lessons i decided to build this new project i'm introducing to you guys today called vinci uh it's named after the late great leonardo da vinci i share a birthday with him uh but the idea is that it's versatile in handling a lot of your server use cases it's built on veet it's built on nitro it has a bun app like api and i don't really have a good way of describing it so i just call it a meta bundler credits to ryan for giving me that name but the idea is that it handles your development server your production server it's your bundler it's the runtime api for your server and this is what take you a small sneak peek through the uh, experience of writing an app in vinci let's start with a static file server you know you just say mode static and you give it a directory and now you have a static file server well let's say you decided that you want to build an api on top that's just another router that you add to your vinci config you give it a handler file which would specify to vinci what what module to use to service those api endpoints and what to build during the bundling process 
Now, let's say I wanted to build uh, an API in the style of Next.js where I wanted the file system routing with dynamic routes and things like that. Well, that's just another uh, option that Vinci provides to you. You can build any file system router mapping to any convention and pass it to the routes config. Uh, this can be, you know, something like the pages directory or the app directory or any other routing convention, like for example, the SwellKit routing convention, whatever, whatever pleases you. Now, you know, there's no fun just building a backend. So we built a front end and that's just another router in your uh, application config. You see the third router here is a, is a client router where we build your index HTML for you. And during development, we give you the same experience Wheat does with uh, amazing hot module replacement. And you get to add any Wheat plugins you want. Uh, and that's, that applies to any other router as well. The idea here is that you're getting isolated Wheat routers for each of your app routers and uh, you get separate plugin pipelines and separate builds for all of them. And so that's how you easily get the server client experience that you've been looking for. Now, let's say I want to move to, you know, server side rendering where the client uh, picks up with JavaScript, but the server side sends your HTML. Well, it's repetitive now, but that's just another router where you say that you want an SSR router, which is doing a React render to string kind of experience and you add your React plugins to it. And again, you now you get HMR on the server while you're building your React apps. And well, there's no fun with there's no file system routing. And so just like with the API directory, you take your file system routing and you apply them to your SSR router and your client router. And now you just get, you know, this symmetrical file system routing between your server and your client, and it's all bundled well, it's all optimized. Well, that was the experience of slowly evolving in a, an application in Vinci. I want to end with a small thought. The reason I really like building my own things is because I get to have my own opinions. I really believe that everybody should be given the freedom of having their opinions, being able to test them and being able to, you know, change them when needed. But this is not possible if the tools we use are heavily opinionated because to now build an alternative, you have to climb a huge mountain just to get on the parity of features from a user perspective. I truly believe that there's a lot of value in engineers being able to have the freedom to have opinions without compromising on performance or user experience, because that is the path to building better and better patterns, because nothing comes without experimentation and failure. Thank you for listening to my talk. I hope you had a good time and have a great time during the rest of the conference.